Well, uh, look, as you can see from the screen there, we are starting a new theme, a new preaching theme. Oh, yeah, so uh, we've just finished the book, or rather the letter of 1 Corinthians, which we spent a number of months going through, and um, I keep uh, reassuring myself that that was helpful to you, um, and I trust it was. Uh, Now we're going to move from a book to a theme, and we're going to be looking at this theme of discipleship, and as you can see, the question we've got up there is, what's the real thing? What's the real thing? And um, the way we're going to have a a look at the whole uh, issue of discipleship is we're going to look at certain sort of themes and characteristics that that mark out true disciples. So what do we see when we look at the disciples? Well, we see Jesus teaching them to do some of these things. We we see them teaching them to love, to, to follow, to learn, to pray, to serve, forgive, to take risks. At times. All the things there we're going to spend some time at. One of the interesting ones in there as well, I just want to point out to you, is this one of rest. Disciples rest. We're terrible at resting in this part of the world. Our life is defined by how hard we work. And people do work very hard. Long hours. I want to say this. We're going to be looking. Malcolm is going to look at the whole issue of what is a Sabbath rest. How does that work? Why is that important? And are we doing it? And what's the consequence of not? So these are some of the things we're going to be looking at. We're going to be taking subjects like that. And I hope in that way we're going to break down this whole issue of discipleship and, um, and hope it'll do us good. Uh, now, probably many of you will say, well, hang on, this, this issue of discipleship, man, I've been a Christian for a while and I've heard quite a few sermons in my life on the issue of discipleship. Well, good, uh, I would say. Excellent. Because actually, when you think about it, Jesus' final words to his disciples when he was as- before he was just ascended into heaven were, were what? Go and make disciples. It's, it's the mission we're on, church. It's what we're about. We're about making disciples. It's the Great Commission, Matthew 28. When Jesus says, go into all the world and make disciples, you know, baptizing them, teaching them. The Great Commission, that's called. And it's what we're absolutely meant to be doing. So as disciples of Jesus, you and I are meant to be making disciples. We're meant to be following him and discipling others. That's what a disciple looks like. That's what a disciple looks like. And actually, I'm excited by this idea that we have a room full of disciples. I'm really excited by that because actually we need that. Because we are believing God, aren't we, that many people will be saved over the next few years. I I trust in my heart. I, I, I know I'm excited every year about this, but I feel excited about it again. I believe God is going to do something very profound among us. And I believe for hundreds, if not for thousands of people to be saved. I believe that. You might not, but I do. Okay. <laughs> and actually, if we see lots of people saved, who's going to be doing the discipling? You lot. You lot. You say, well, hang on a minute. I, you, know, whatever, I'm, you know, actually, when somebody knows nothing, it means you know an awful lot. You know how to pray. You know to, how to open your Bible and read it. You've been through some conundrums and difficulties, and you can say, well, actually, in my experience, this is what happens. So all of us need to be disciples. It's a natural part of Christianity. We are disciples, and we are disciples. <clears throat> okay, but before we can get to those heady heights, there are a couple of questions we need to ask ourselves. And uh, there's a passage of Scripture I'd like us to read together that will help us ask some of these important questions. So, Max, can you just bring up the next? So, I'd like to read this, John 1, 35 to 42. You can turn to it if you like, but it is up here. So, let's read this together. So, the next day, John, that's John the Baptist, was was standing with two of his disciples. And he looked at Jesus as he walked by, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, And they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following. 
and said to them, what are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying and they stayed with him that day for it was about the 10th hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter, and both Cephas and Peter mean rock. Okay, so what's going on then in this passage of scripture? Well, here is John the Baptist, and he's got a group of disciples around him. And Jesus walks by one day, and he obviously points at Jesus and says, Ah, behold, the Lamb of God. And this clearly makes such an impact on on Andrew and this other disciple, we don't know what his name is, that they think, Oh, okay, well, we're not going to follow you anymore, John. We're going to start following Jesus. So it seems instantaneously they leave John, and they start following Jesus up the road. They start physically pursuing him. Well, you know what it's like when you're being followed. You sort of do become aware of it after a bit, don't you? And Jesus clearly has become aware of this. And he turns around and he sees these two guys following him. And he asks them a question. And he says, what are you seeking? Now, that's an interesting question. Because actually what he's doing with these two guys is he's cutting to the core straight away. He's actually saying, well, what do you want then? What are you after? What are you after? What are you seeking? See, all sorts of people have come to Jesus, and they've all come for different reasons. And I think Jesus is trying to find out, why are you following me? See, it's interesting, isn't it, for Jesus? He's not just interested in numbers. He doesn't just say, oh, good, people following me. Woohoo! Lots of numbers. The Jesus movement is gathering, uh, you know, I'm not particularly bothered why they come. I just want the numbers. No, no, he's not at all. He's really interested in why are you following me? It's the question he's asked. And I want to say as we begin to look at this issue of discipleship, that's a really important question for us. And I want to ask you today. I know we're, <laughs> there's going to be quite a lot of challenge in today, by the way. So get ready for it. I know it's kind of the opening one, but we need to ask this question of ourselves. What are you after? What are you seeking? What do you want? See, some people follow, take an interest in Jesus for, you know, all sorts of different reasons. Uh, You know, uh, some people are just sick, aren't they? And they've, only, they've got so far with the doctors, and the doctors said, well, we really can't take you any further. The NHS can take you this far, but no further. And you suddenly realize, hang on a minute, I, I'm, I'm ill. And suddenly, people like that will turn sometimes to Jesus and say, Jesus, will you heal me? I really need you to heal me. Some people want a religious experience. They like the idea of having a spiritual thing happen. And they want to kind of, woo. I might fall over. I might go shaky and fall over. Ooh, that sounds good. And, but that's what they're after. See, some people come to church for that sort of reason. They, they, they come because they want community. Well, it's a good thing to want. I mean, but that's why they're here. Some people come because they want a platform. I could be a leader and I could get to talk to people. Everyone would have to listen to me. That's what they want. Now look, there are all sorts of different reasons why we come to Christ, and I'm not knocking any of them. And actually, it's good that we come to Jesus and say, please will you heal me? Please will you provide for me? That's absolutely good. But actually, being after God for something doesn't necessarily make you a disciple. It just probably makes you a bit desperate, and you don't know where else to go. Well, it's a good place to go to God. See, I think what Jesus is doing with this question immediately is he's probing these two guys. Why are you here? 
See, some people have come just because they're sick. There's another passage that comes up, and a, and a man's blind. Jesus, will you heal my eyes? Yes, I will. God is full of grace, and he heals them. Then we never hear from them again. And here are Andrew and this other disciple following Jesus. And Jesus says, so what are you guys after then? Do you just want a quick fix to make your life better? Or are you after me? What do you want? Well, their reply shows what they're really after. Because they say this, don't they? Max, can you click it for me? Rabbi, where are you staying? Well, see, that says a lot. Where are you staying says, says no, I'm not after a quick fix to a problem. I, I want to get to know you. I want to come and live with you. I want to get below the surface with you. I, I want to find out what you're like. I, you know, I want to chat with you. I, 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 you are the one that's interesting me. And also when they say rabbi, what they're saying is, I recognize you're the teacher. Therefore, I am the student I want you to teach me. So they're saying two things here. I want to get to know you genuinely, and I want you to teach me. I think that sums up the heart of what it is to be a disciple. A disciple of Jesus wants those two things. We want to be taught by him, and we want to get to know him genuinely, beyond the superficial. That's what disciples look like now the good thing is Jesus then replies oh <laughs> thank you <laughs> come and you will see so the good news is today if you want to be a disciple of Jesus Jesus would say to you yeah you can be come with me and you can have it. You can see what I am genuinely like. You can find that out. You can know me and I will teach you. I've got to say, as I was preparing this, I feel this is a really big question for us today. Which one do you want? See, some of us live our Christian lives like God is a kind of fix-it God that we put in our pocket. And when we get into trouble, we live our lives, and then we get into trouble, and we say, God, help, help, help. I need your help. I'm really frightened, or I haven't got any money, or could, what are you going to do about this? And God, of course, is gracious and helps us. And then we say, thank you very much. Put it back. I'm going to get on with my life now until the next trouble. And then we go, oh, God, help, help, help. I believe some of us have lived our Christian lives like that. But you see, Jesus is after disciples. These are people who every day will say, I want to know you and I want to be taught by you. I believe the question that God wants to be, it's a bit of a moment in God here for some of you, I think. Which one do you want? You see, one, to be honest, is a bit immature. It's what children do. I want this, I want this, I want this. Oh, I've got it now, right, bye. I'm off now, thank you. I'm going to go and play with my friends. I'm going to live my life over here until the next time I need. Mom, mom, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Some of us live like that. We live our Christian lives like we're young children. I believe God is asking today, will you step up to the plate? Will you become my disciple? I will bless believers. Because, and people would come to Jesus and he would give them things. He'd give them their sight. They'd be frightened about their children. God would rescue their children. He poured out blessing, and he will continue to pour out blessing because he's good. But Jesus is looking for disciples. Church, will we be disciples? Or will we just be beneficiaries? What do you want? See, one requires a bit more maturity. It requires you to be more steadfast. It requires you to say, no, I'm going to step up. No, I'm your disciple every day. And of course, there are consequences to being a disciple. I'm not going to kid you. 
It means when you go into the office sometimes and they say, right, we're all going to look at porn today, you've got a decision to make. Or when they say, uh, oh, can you, uh, your boss says, look, just lie to him, will you? Just tell him I'm not around. You've got another decision to make. You'll have to say, do you know, I'm sorry, I can't do that. And there'll be times when people will say, why not? What's wrong with you then? You think you're superior? You'll get yourself into trouble because you're a disciple. It comes at cost, being a disciple. It's not easy. I'm not going to give you a great you know, soft sell on being a disciple. But you will get to see the glory of God. You will get to see him. You know, Jesus is talking to his disciples once and he says, to you, the secrets of the kingdom have been made known. Doors get open for you when you're a disciple. You get to know him when you follow him. I'm not going to move on quickly because I feel this is the main question God wants to ask. Might just have a moment. For some of you, this is the difference between maturing and not. Between moving on in your relationship with God and not. It's you putting your hand up today to say, I choose to be a disciple of Jesus. We'll come back to this. Another question that this passage, could you, could you go back to the passage of scripture? Another question that uh, I just really thought about as I was just reading through this passage was this. Why is it that Andrew and his mate, his friend, why are they ahead of the game here? Because they start to follow Jesus before Jesus has called them. On most of the other guys, if you look at Matthew and uh, Simon, Jesus says, follow me. But yet these guys start to follow Jesus before Jesus has even... Why are they so ahead of the game? They're really at the top of the curve here, aren't they? They've done well, these guys. Why, why are they doing that? Well, I think it's, it's this. They've discovered something about Jesus. See, they've discovered this. He's the Messiah. He's the Messiah. He's the hope of the nation and the nations. He's the saviour of the world. Jesus is the one they have been waiting for for thousands of years. And suddenly, Andrew has had revelation. He's here. This is him. So when John the Baptist says, behold, the Lamb of God. He, here he is. He's had revelation of what Jesus is. I want to say this. When you understand who Jesus is, it will change your desires. You'll want him more than you want a better life. I think it's probably something of the heart of a genuine disciple is that you've had a revelation of who Jesus Christ really is. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you had a revelation, a fresh revelation of who Jesus is? Maybe when you first became a Christian, you understood something about him, that he's good or that he forgives or that he's full of mercy. When was the last time you had a revelation of who Jesus actually is? See, the life of a disciple is constantly discovering who Jesus is. So do you remember that time when they're all out in the boat and the storm's going all over the place and Jesus is asleep, amazingly, and they're all panicking and they wake him up and they I say, Jesus, don't you care? Help! And he stands up and he rebukes the wind and the waves and they're instantly still. And they, the question they ask afterwards is, who is this? Who rebukes the wind and the waves. Even the wind and the waves. Are, they've had a revelation there about who Jesus is. They've discovered something about his awesome power and authority. And they've gone, oh, whoa, I didn't know that about you. That's what discipleship is like. We constantly have revelation of who Jesus is. We are constantly learning. You are supreme. You are awesome. You are tender. You are loving. We don't know this stuff at the beginning. It's okay if you don't know it. It really is. Because God's got us on a learning program called discipleship. And he wants to bring revelation to you consistently. So 
So two questions we've asked are, what are you seeking? What are you after? Why do you come to this church? And do you know who Jesus is? Last thing I just want to point out is, is this one. Yeah, thank you. Last thing I just want to point out is um, right at the end of this passage, there are a few words that Jesus speaks to Peter. And it's interesting. He says this. He says, you are Simon, son of John. You shall be called Cephas. So right at the beginning, he calls out the very destiny and purpose of this man. He says, I know what I will do with you. I know the purposes and the plans I have for you, Simon, who I'm calling Peter, and I know that you'll be rock, because you will be rock-like. In fact, my, your destiny is you're going to be so rock-like, I can build the early church on you. And that's what he goes on to do. He builds the church on this man, because, but right at the beginning, he is, that destiny is called out of this man. I want to say this to you. As you become a disciple, God knows exactly what he can do with you. He knows the purposes and the plans he has for each and every single one of you. He knows you. And the other thing about this is that he also says, and I know what you're like right now. Because he says, you are Simon, son of John. I know your history. I know where you came from. I know what you're like. I know your dad. I understand the life that you've lived. I understand the problems that you've had. I know the, 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 the issues you fought your way through. You are Simon, son of John. I know who you are, but I know what I can do with you. See, many of us disqualify ourselves because of our current present. We say, you don't know what I'm like. You don't know the difficulties I've endured. You don't know how rotten I am. You don't know know the stuff that goes on in my head. I mean, you know, if my wife knew, she'd divorce me. Man, it's just grim. No, he knows who you are. You are Simon, son of John. I know you completely. And I know what I can do with you. And it's beyond what you imagine for yourself. I thought God would say that to us right at the beginning. Disciples, I know you. Some of you are fearful of letting him down. You back away. You say, well, I can't because look at me. He knows you. He still calls you into discipleship to be his. Can you put that question up as well? So that's the issue. Don't rule yourself out. Don't say, I can't be a disciple. Oh, yes, you can. He knows you completely. I'd like us to respond to some of this. So let's pray together. Aj, can you come Okay, we're going to pray together, and um, I'm going to just work my way through these three questions, and I'm going to ask you to respond, okay? So if you want to respond, I'm going to ask you to stand up, and then we're going to pray for you at the end. So if you know that you are someone that wants to freshly commit themselves to being a disciple of Jesus, if you know that... Maybe in the past you have been a bit immature in your relationship and you kind of run to him when you've needed problems. That's not a bad thing. But he is now calling you on to say, no, I want you to be a full-time disciple of mine. If you know, you say, yeah, I want to freshly commit myself not to just being a believer and a receiver, but I now want to be a disciple of his. I'd like you to stand up, please. I want to say to you, if you're someone who you say, yeah, I, I'm a Christian, but I've never really had fresh revelation of who Jesus is. Like these disciples, 
you know, they found out who he was, fresh aspects of who he was. And if you think, actually, I know I'm a bit dry, and I just I can't remember the last time I thought, yeah, I've suddenly realized something about Jesus. If you would like a freshness in that, and you would like God to speak to you again, I'd like you to stand up as well. But knowing him. And then lastly, if you know you are someone who tends to rule yourself out, you tend to say, no, I, I'm just, I, I, you know, I haven't got it. I'd like you to stand up as well. Particularly this last category, I just feel as I'm delivering this, the Lord particularly wants to reassure you. He wants to say, I know you. I know you. I made you. There really are no surprises in you. There really aren't. It's not like I'm going to turn up a stone and think, oh, I didn't know that was there. No, no, he knows you. I feel the Lord wants to be very gentle with you and reassure you, hey, hey, I've got purposes for you. So I'd like us just to spend a moment. You might need to talk to God yourself over that the matter. Let's just have a, just a moment with an edge plays and we'll just... <clears throat> So Jesus, I pray now for those who have decided they want to be disciples of yours, who want to follow you daily. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you would bless them and strengthen them. I ask, Heavenly Father, you would help them to walk with you daily, Lord, and to be yours. I pray for maturity, actually, and I pray for a love for you to grow that just instinctively, every day, they would turn to you and just say, Lord, I need you. I, I, where are we going today? Lord, I pray that you would teach them your ways. And I pray, Heavenly Father, they would get to know you and love you. Find out what you're like, as it were, behind closed doors. I pray for those, Father, who have not had fresh revelation of who you are recently and I ask you Father that in the next few days and weeks you will speak freshly to them Lord God that they will understand that you are the Lord of heaven that you have the name that is above every other name that is that name Father I pray for fresh revelation let it come fresh Lord fresh manna from heaven as it were Lord that fresh understanding fresh delight in you a fresh thrilling in you I pray Father for moments when they see storms stilled as it were and them saying how did you do that how did you rescue me from that situation God I pray for fresh revelation because we are your disciples and then lastly Father I pray for those who rule themselves out I want to ask you that you would reassure them that you know them. And that, Lord, you know what's in them and what you can do with them. So, Father, freshly now, all of us just come to you to say, we love you. Lord Jesus, we honor you. We recognize that you're in the business of making disciples and making us into disciples. So we commit ourselves freshly to that purpose, freshly to you, O oh God. Holy Spirit, would you come freshly right now? Would you come and fill? We can't do this on our own, Lord. We really can't do this. It's not about effort. Just We can respond, Lord, but we need you now to breathe on us. So Holy Spirit, breathe freshly on everyone, everyone that's here. Those that have stood, those that are sitting, meet with them, Lord, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen.